How's it going out there, YouTubers? Subnex Shark here with another new movie review for you. So let's get right into this movie review and see what's about. A few days ago, I had the chance of checking out another 2017 film that got huge raves for how good of a film it was. And everyone says that it was such an amazing film, just wonderful and great, and that everyone should check it out. So I gave it a whirl because me and my girlfriend wanted to check it out. And that's the film A Ghost Story. Now, A Ghost Story has a very limited cast. I mean, literally like two big names and the, like I think the other few people you see throughout the film, you know, barely see the other people throughout the film. They're like nobodies pretty much. Now, this is pretty much one of those, like, it takes you back to kind of one of those old school horror type of films where it's, you know, very limited dialogue, all about the scares and stuff like that. And that's the kind of the thought I got when I was watching it and what they were trying to do with it. Now, this film was directed by Mr. David Lowry. Now, David Lowry really doesn't have too many other directing credits. He has been executive producer and writer on other things. But a couple films he has actually directed. Now, one of them is an awesome remake of an awesome Disney classic from the 70s. And that's the film Pete's Dragon. Now, he did a really good job with Pete's Dragon. I was really impressed with this remake. I thought it was very decent. I definitely didn't think it was comparable to the original. But still, at the same time, I thought it was a decent and fun film. I thought the little kid that played Pete was really good, and I thought the CGR work they did with... Uh, you know, Elliot was really amazing too as well. And everyone involved made the film very fun and kind of entertaining. Now, another film that he directed uh, was another Rooney Mara Case and Casey Affleck film together that they worked on. And it was I was really surprised I didn't realize they had done another movie together. And I was like really shocked. I was like, really? Huh, I didn't realize they had done anything together before. I was really surprised. And that film is Ain't Them Body Saints. Now, this one is supposedly, I haven't actually seen it. It's supposedly kind of a love story between three main characters, which happen to be Rooney Mara and uh, Casey Affleck, and then also another individual, where basically all three of them are on different sides of the law. And basically, it's about their story and how their story unfolds, basically. And But I haven't had a chance to see it, so I real, real, know really... Uh, David Lowry's, you know, directing on that film. But with the view of Pete's Dragon and then a ghost story, he has a decent eye. He He's really decent at directing, and he does a decent job. Now, with a ghost story, unfortunately, I'm sorry, but I thought that he could have done so much more with it. I thought he could have made it a lot more scarier, relying on, you know, the old tricks. Uh, him trying to do that with this film, he tried a little too hard, and I thought that the very minimum dialogue of the film, too, didn't really help the film. And it, I don't feel it really brought to light what they were trying to convey in the film. I was really shocked because I was expecting something more. I thought he could have done better, definitely, because with how decent Pete's Dragon was. And so I was really kind of upset and shocked that, that he didn't do as well with this film as he could have. Now, this movie has a really small ensemble cast, and really there's only two main stars that really are in the film, majority of the film, and also there's like a few bit people here and there, but they're like in the movie for like maybe five to n not even six to seven minutes long, usually, besides Rooney Mara and Casey Affleck's characters. Now, to start off this awesome cast, of course, we have the awesome and Miss Rooney Mara. Now... Rooney Mara, we all recognize from like such films as the Pan remake, uh, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo film, uh, and several other films over the years like Bloody Mary, uh, Urban Legends, uh, you know, films like that. But a couple that I remember her in and thought were decent films were such films as the awesome Michael Sarah film that was kind of funny, his accent and this character he makes in the film, and that's the film Youth in Revolt. Now, with Youth and Revolt, she plays a short part in the film, though, but still it's a very uh, memorable and awesome and funny role. Uh, she plays kind of a character that uh, Michael Sarah comes across and kind of has a crush on, but doesn't really uh, think that he has a chance with her because of his alter ego. And basically, the movie kind of unfolds around her a little bit, 
and gives her kind of an interesting and wonderful characterization and vibe. I, I really enjoyed the character. I thought she was fun in the film. I thought she made the you know film full and complete. And I thought she definitely did a good job in that film. Another film that she was in that I really enjoyed and thought was a really decent film. It was a Oscar-nominated film that came out last uh, 2016, actually. And that film happens to be Lion. Now, Lion, of course, like I said, was Oscar-nominated in 2016. It had Dave Patel in it, uh, Nicole Kidman, David Wenham. And it was just a really awesome, based-on-true-story film. It was a really interesting story, too. And I thought she played the character uh, of the main character, uh, girlfriend slash kind of like wife almost, uh, to the T. She was really good in it. I really enjoyed her presence in the film. And she gave it a whole new light. She really brought to life that unfortunate character that had to deal with, you know, her boyfriend or, you know, kind of husband type of character and how, you know, he's going basically, like, trying to figure out his past, like, what happened to him, what happened to his family, you know, and so forth, and stuff like that. It was a really, you know, crazy story, but at the same time, it's a, a touching and interesting story, and I'm so glad that they brought it to the, the big screen for us to see, because that character, that gentleman, it, it, you know, he really... Uh, had a crazy life, but still at the same time it worked out for him and he ended up becoming a better person and getting a really full life and being adopted by a really caring family. It just was a really intense and awesome film. I highly recommend seeing it. Really good movie. Uh, definitely, definitely if you haven't seen it, check it out. Such worth a watch. But in A Ghost Story, Rudimara's character is so bland and just horrible. This is probably one of the worst roles I've seen her in. And I just didn't care for it that much. I was really disappointed in, in the film because they didn't really give her enough uh, to go off of. I mean, the brief scenes that she did have talking in, it was kind of about arguing in those scenes and, you know, just kind of emotions. And some of those emotion scenes where they're like, hugging in bed and, you know, that they love each other. That was really good. But other than that, I thought that, you know, how she acted after uh, the what happens to the character and uh, of her husband and how she reacted and how she interacted with other people, th you know, through the rest of the movie just was really bland and totally uh, unexpected and disappointing. I was really shocked at her performance in this. I was expecting a lot more and... Uh, you know, she definitely has proved it through other films, you know, such as The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and Lion and and Bloody Mary, uh, Urban Legends, you know, stuff like that. She she has a lot of talent, and even in Pan, she showed a lot more talent. And I, it was too bad that the story wasn't there for her to really show her acting chops. Now, the other only other really main character in the film is, of course, is the awesome Mr. Casey Affleck. Now, Casey Affleck, we all recognize from such films as Gone Baby Gone, uh, that recent commercial uh, on SNL that he did when he was, did a guest spot, uh, being, you know, the mayor of Duncan and stuff like that, and also being in Manchester by the Sea and so forth. Uh, but a couple films I really enjoyed him and thought he was really good in were such films as the awesome 2012 film with Ben Stiller and Eddie Murphy. Tower Heist. That movie is absolutely hilarious and super funny. I thought Casey was awesome in that film. I really enjoyed his character. I thought he was super cool in it. And I just really enjoyed the whole movie as a whole. I thought it was a really awesome film. It was awesome to see Alan Alda in a different type of role too. And so that was fun to see him along with everyone and Casey Affleck working together. I thought they did a really good job and Casey was really awesome in that. Another really awesome film that Casey Affleck was in that Disney produced that's based on a true story is a Chris Pine-led film that is just an amazing and awesome film and a really heroic film about these guys, these lifeguard type of guys. And that is the film The Finest Hour. Now, this movie was really intense and I really enjoyed it. I thought everyone involved was really good. I thought they did a really good job cinematically and uh, with the CGI work in the film. But Casey Affleck's character I really thought was really awesome. He played the character to tea, gave, bring, you know, gave the guy's story, you know, brought it to life for, you know, our time frame now because, I mean, this happened over 50 years ago and just really gave us an idea of what really happened and, 
It, it just was a really intense and awesome based on true story film. And Casey did a lot of great work in the film. I loved, like I said, I loved his character. Thought he did an amazing job. And just, I think Casey's a really good actor and doesn't get enough credit for how good of an actor he is. And just did a really amazing job. But when it came to a ghost story, unfortunately, once again, bland. I was really disappointed. It was just really, really sad to see these two talented actors and they're just kind of, you know, basically wordless and just like... I mean, just like that pretty much. I, it, it, was, it was like basically like... In Clerks 2, when Randall is talking about how the Lord of the Rings were. This was the first movie. Uh, here's the second movie. And here's the third movie. That's pretty much how I felt watching a ghost story. So, unfortunately for me, I thought this movie was horrendous. Horribly boring. Totally, totally just unimaginably boring i was like so like we, i was literally sitting there and my girlfriend looks at me and goes is this picking up yet like i mean this is how boring it was i was just blown away with how horrible this film was and i can't believe all the cr critics and all the credit this film's getting i'm I was absolutely cracking up when i was reading the reviews i was just like are you kidding me this is not entertainment this is boringness I was like literally like on like fire going a little bit too when I was reading some of these comments and I was just like, eh, okay, yeah. I'm like, where did you see that? Because literally the whole movie really did not make sense either. In some enlightening way, I'm sure it does. But at the same time, when you're a person watching a film, you want to be entertained while you're watching the film. And that's not what this did. This just confused the hell out of people. It just, it was horribly horribly done it was just really horrendous and i highly do not recommend this zero golden movie boxes up on this one people really bad but if you're not familiar with what the story of this movie is about basically the premise of a ghost story is it's about this couple who unfortunately one of them passes away and uh, Basically, the rest of the movie is about that person as a ghost kind of watching the other person, what they do, and basically the world evolving around them. And basically coming back to a culmination of, you know, why this house was so special to that individual and, you know, what the, he lost out on and what this love story is supposed to be about. It being a love story, too, at the same time, I want to quote this. Where is the love story? I'm sorry. I didn't see any love story in this. I thought it was hilarious that they called it a love story, too. I was just... I was literally, like, so disappointed with this film. Like I said, highly do not recommend it. Uh, but, you know, once again, like I always say, see for yourself. If you think that this is a great movie, that's fantastic. That's your opinion. That's your taste. This is just me giving you my opinion on the film. But at the same time, if you want to give it a try, go ahead. See for yourself how boring this film is or how entertaining it'll be supposedly to you. But yeah, at the same time, I would not say that. Go ahead and go check this out. I wouldn't waste the money. If it comes on HBO or on something for free, then watch it, definitely. Uh, but yeah, at the same time, I just thought it was really, really crappy and I was really disappointed. I was expecting a lot more, a lot more out of this film. Zero golden movie boxes up, people. Zero. So that's it for this review, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. As always, thank you for subscribing. And if this is your first time here, or if you've been here before and haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss one of these awesome videos I do, or any of the awesome videos I do. As always, keep your eyes out for any older, newer videos you might not have seen mine yet. And as always, check out that awesome link about the awesome Horror Pack. Now, Horror Pack is an awesome subscription service that comes right to your door of awesome horror films, either on DVD or Blu-ray. And each box comes with an awesome limited edition that you can't get anywhere else. That's right. Kind of like if you were like big into collecting Scream Factory, or if you're big into Vinegar Syndrome, or if you're big into, you know, uh, Arrow. It, it's the same thing. These limited editions that you can only get through those companies, the same with this. 
So what better way for a really good price, and you get four movies out of this, what better way to spend a couple bucks? Especially, too, if you're a huge horror fan and like to collect cool things. As always, if you're interested in signing up or are going to sign up, let me know down in the comments so I can hook you up with a discount on your first month. As always, catch you in the next one.